All right, welcome back. Now, in this particular video, we're actually going to consider the various types of um, the various types of classroom, right? So before before we move on to actually take um, say K-means classroom, we first discuss K-means classroom um, in the intuition behind that. So then we go to the lab and also see how we're going to implement that, right? Then we move on to um, hierarchical classroom, right? We're going to consider all that. Now, before we do that, before we do that, let's make some things clear over here before we take another step, right? Let's make some things clear over here. So, uh, if you remember, if you remember in the previous um, class, we talked about what is called the K nearest neighbor, right? Remember that? Now, in this particular um, tutorial, right, or in this particular session, you also realize that we are talking about what is called the K means clustering, all right? So, most people sometimes confuse themselves with what k nearest neighbor is and what k means classroom is right it's just like the names are uh, similar to each other but they are different algorithms all together and they will use them in different situations all together all right so let's try and then get a basic understanding of what k nearest neighbor means and what k means i mean also means and at what situation do we use i mean either of these okay so let's let's try and then get a basic understanding so in the next video we're actually going to take the k means classroom and then dive deep into that all right so in the meantime let's see the difference between k nearest neighbor and k means classroom all right now if you if you if you consider if you consider this um if you consider the k and n and then the k means right they are all machine learning algorithms right but as I said, when we are starting, I mean, if you look, if you, if you, if you watch the introduction video, um, I pointed out that everything that we were doing, right, everything that we were doing so far before this particular class, before the, the I mean, the, the classroom class, right, what, everything that we've been talking about is related to supervised, right, is related to supervised machine learning, right? They are all supervised machine um, learning algorithms, right? So supervised ML algos right or machine i mean supervised machine learning algorithms all right so now we are going to consider unsupervised right we are now whatever we are doing from this from this class right is, is related to unsupervised right whatever we are doing from this class is related to unsupervised machine learning right machine learning algorithm okay so if we take KNN, right, KNN is actually a supervised machine learning algorithm, right? If we take K-means, K-means is a non-supervised machine learning algorithm, okay? KNN is where we have, we have a target, right? We have a target and then we try to predict the target, say, um, whether a person is, is having a cancer or not, right? Whether a cell is cancerous or not, whether we should grant a person a loan or not, whether we should grant a person access to a company resource or not. So we or we will be already having a target. If you remember, we talked about what is called the labeled data, right? And I'm sure by now you are, you understand what um what labeled data means, right? I understand. I'm sure by now you understand what labeled data means. Okay, we talked about that. Now in in KNN, um, what 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 we do is that we will be having we will be having a target. Let's say, let's if you remember we take a GDP example, right? If, if I hope I I mean I hope you you understand that you you can recall that that example, right? We have GDP, then we have several other factors, maybe like um the the, the educational system of the country, right? We talked about this. And if you remember that in our previous class, we talked about this educational system in the country, plus maybe um, other, some other, other factors, maybe the technological advancement in the country, right? The technological advancement in the country, plus some, some other factors, right? Some other factors that will contribute, right? Some other factors that will contribute to this, this um, GDP. So this GDP will actually, um, we'll be having, say, a table, right? We'll be having a table already. Right, um, maybe like a data frame, and then you remember you you realize that we'll be having several several uh, features. So this could be educational system, it could be the technology, it could be um, some other factors. Right, some other factors will be here, and then the GDP will be here. Right, the GDP will be here. So we'll be having some GDPs already, some GDPs already. Then we try to um, make our model learn from this these features, and then later on we will try to predict this GDP. Okay, so already we will be having something to to supervise over. Right? We'll be having something to to compare our results to. Right, we'll be having something that we want to predict finally. Right, so, so that is a supervised machine learning problem. All right, where we already have a target, and then we try to use some other features to predict the target. Right, we use some other features to predict the target. 
Now, if we take the if we take the unsupervised machine learning problem, right? We don't have any target, right? There will be no target, right? There will be no target. So let's say we want to um, group customers according to the things they buy at our website, right? Or according to um, the kind of services they 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 actually look for in our in our banking system, right? So that that becomes some some kind of a grouping that we want to do we don't have a target to predict right whether we should grant the customer a loan or not but we want to see their behavior and then group them into into groups into similar groups right so that becomes i mean a, um unsupervised machine learning problem and in that case right k means also comes in handy in that in that particular case right k means comes in handy so if you see the simple definition that i've given over here right i'm saying that k nearest algorithm right is a supervised machine learning uh, supervised classification algorithm, just like I just explained to you, right? And here, the K, right? The K in the K nearest neighbor, right? The K in the K nearest neighbor is the number of neighbors. If you remember, I, I mentioned that um, if you have, say, um, nine friends, right? If you, if you have nine friends, and then out of the nine, seven of them speak French, and they, if you ask me that, um, if you ask me which, and then two of them, two of them speak English, right? So seven of them speak French, and then two of them speak English. So um, if you ask me which of the language are you likely, right? Which of the, of the language are you likely to speak? I will associate you with, um, say, French, right? because most of your friends speak um, French. So I'll be likely to associate you with. So this, these nine, nine members that we are considering here becomes the key, right? That becomes the neighbors, right? That becomes the neighbors. So uh, if you remember, I also gave an example where in your family, maybe your mother, your brother, right? So you have you have your mother, right? You have your mother, you have your father, right? You have your senior, you have your senior brother. They are all veg, right? They are all veg. So all these guys are veg, right? They are all veg people. Now, if you ask me, if you ask me whether you're a veg or not, I, I'm likely to say that you're also veg, right? You're also likely to be a veg because I mean, your neighbors, right, which, which are your family members, which are closer to you, they are all veg, so, I mean, um, they are all vegetarian, so I'm likely to say that you are also a vegetarian, all right? So these, these family members, right, so here we have your mother, your father, and then your senior brother, so we say that we, there are three over here, right? So here your K will be equal to um, three, right? So, and then here your K will be equal to nine. So the K actually here represents the neighbors, okay? Represent the neighbors. Now... If we take if we take the k means right if we take the k means if we take the k means we use k means in unsupervised machine learning right so um, unlike the k nearest where we use it in supervised right in k means we use it in unsupervised machine learning problem and the k the k in the k means right the k in the k means represent the number of clusters right it represent the number of clusters so if you remember the example that we gave that um you'll be having something like this right you'll be having something like this with several data points in here right with several data points like that right with several data points like that and then um later on you try to get um, a common center right so if if we pick say this right let me actually do it this way right you'll be having say one centroid here then you'll be having another centroid here and then uh, you try to associate these points right you try to associate these points according to how closer they are to the to the centroids right according to how closer they are to the centroids so these centroids right these centroids that we have here these centroids that we have here represent the k so in this case we have two centroids so here our k equals two okay our k equals two so in this case we have two centroids and our k is equal to two okay so here our k represents the neighbors right in 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 k nearest neighbor our k represent neighbors in um in k means our k represent the centroids right our k represent the centroids that we have right the number of centroids that we have okay so i hope i hope this is this is uh, i mean clear and this gives you i mean an intuition about what k means means and uh, what um k nearest means right so let's let's take this image and then see um just get a little bit further into that right so if you remember this example when we're talking about the 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 k and then classification we talked about this right so if we choose say k equals three it means that we are considering three neighbors so that's this one is our data right? this one is our new point here so if we choose k equals three we are talking about three neighbors right so that is one two three right so that's one two three right and if we choose k equals say five then we are talking about five neighbors right which means that we have widened our circle right we have widened our circle and now you can see that we have one two three four and then five neighbors okay so that is that is for 
for KNN, right? And we use it in supervised machine learning problem, right? And uh, let's 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 see another image which also represents the K means, right? So in the K means, if we talk about if we talk about the K, right? The K represents the various centuries that we have, right? Represent the various centuries that we have where we are going to associate the various points, right? So in this case, you can see that we have one, two, three, four central points or centroids, right? So in this case. Our k over here is actually four, right? So that's 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 our k, right? It's going to be four here. That represents the centuries that we have, okay? And we use it in non-supervised machine learning problems. So I hope I hope um, this one gives you a fair idea of um, what is I mean the difference between between k k means and then k and n, right? The difference between the two. All right. So in the next video, we are actually going to consider um, the k means. We are going to take the k means and then dive deep into that. Alright, so see you in the next video.